Okay. <coughs> Is everybody from? All here? All good? Okay. Um, mm. I hope you can see that. I think this thing needs to be a bit further from me. It's producing great sound. Right. So um, we're going to continue with our um, lecture. So what, what are we going to learn? What about, what's that? Signal and signal transduction. Again, you are going to see more and more weird words. Okay? And these words, even though your English is so good, they mean differently in biological context. Okay? So I suggest you to have your own glossary book and write. Even though I give you options to write it um, on your phone, I mean uh, to type it on your phone, use your hand. Okay? You see, all of the great professors, all the Nobel laureates, you, you see they have things in common. They use their hands to write things down. You don't, you don't read stories, they use Google Drive to take down the note. No, 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 nobody does that. There is something about using your hand to write down, utilizing all your psychomoto while learning, that really solidify your, your learning, connecting the dots, okay? So please, I know this is the, the modern age, people like to type and have everything online, but find ways to, to, to write. Um, traditionally <clears throat> okay number one you need to um, understand about what is meant by signal transduction have you heard that word before transduction trans from the word transduce what what does it mean any idea any synonym for it transduce kind of like Transform plus induce. You have the original signal in different form. You transform it, and in addition to it, you induce it. Okay? You amplify it because the signals can be very weak, but you want the response to be certain, to be very targeted. Okay, I think good, the good example um, for, for it is actually happening with your body. You see, you, did you have your breakfast this morning? Have you had your breakfast? Yeah. What, what kind of energy is that? Your food. It's an energy, right? Food. What kind of energy is it? Chemical energy. So the chemical energy get into your body, it gets digested, then through many various process and steps, now you have the energy to do work. And then you, you come here, you lift the book that you want to use this morning. You pull out the chair that you want to use this morning. So now, these actions now, this energy, is it still chemical energy? Pulling, pushing, this is already mechanical energy. So this is actually a form of energy transduction, transduce from one form to another. Yeah, pretty much like photosynthesis, you, you learn photosynthesis, um, the, the energy from the sun gets converted to chemical energy. In your body, chemical energy gets converted to mechanical energy and so on. And sometimes the changes of and um, potential from one potential to another potential can be of various uh, forms, okay? So that's very important to get that in head. Yeah, so, oh, sorry. I hope you can see this. So from signal to receptor 
to signal, signal transduction to respond. So this is the whole idea about the signals and the response. Why? 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 Why do you need to know this? Isn't it enough just to know about fertilizer and then feed your crop and then wait until harvest? Or maybe you deal a bit more with pesticide, pathogen attack and so on. Isn't it enough? Yeah. So this is kind of like fair warning. Our field, our sector, agriculture, horticulture and, 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 and the kind, this is something that people tend to neglect easily, really. We, we, we like to do various practice in agronomy, various practice in gardening and so on. But we, we fail to understand what has happened. This, this actually creating some kind of communication and also the feedback response. You do something to your crop, your crop is a living thing. It is studded, filled with receptors. You can think of receptors like your astro antenna, you know, the satellite dish. It's always there. It's ready to pick up signals. It's ready to pick up all these, you know, signs. And the moment it pick up, it's going to do something. If it is the right signal, certain things will happen and others not. Okay, so this um, reaction, influence, and so on, it's, it's very specific and not everything happening at one time. Okay, I, I can assure you, I have seen um, many of our students, they only worry about this thing, you know, be it, um, you know, postgraduate master or PhD and so on. When they have to do discussion, you know, they have done the experiment and so on, because our faculty is not very much equipped with equipment to study at cellular level, molecular level. We, we have, but it's not very extensive, okay? To, to study this kind of thing, you need to see how the things are happening at not only at cellular levels, but the signals and the response can actually happening in a bigger time frame and also space. Maybe you give the treatment to your root, but the response you see in the shoot. Okay, so it's 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 kind of big framework to, to, to deal with. Okay, so I purposely put this into your lesson. Oh, this has not never happened before. I kind of revised this thing um, to, to, to make um, our, our students get exposed to this. You can see that there's actually very few slides dealing with this because I, 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 we, are, we are more into giving you the, the exposure. Okay, so if you look at this, uh, this will be the first figure. Timing of plant responses to the environment ranges from very rapid to extremely slow. friends next to you right try to pinch your friend <laughs> see the response is it slow is it fast or is it like oh it's going to happen in any way later <laughs> try <to> pinch <laughs> is it fast or is it slow fast. is it possible to be slow if, if it's fast, that kind of expected, because pinching, uh, I do not know, some people enjoying it, you know. <laughs> they, they, they find joy in pain. There is a word for it. Some people are going to take some time. One time you pinch, nothing happened. Try 16 times. Okay? You just want to be certain about it. Okay, you mean business. All right, all right, then I'll respond. Okay. So, the, the responses in plants are pretty much like that. There are responses that are happening even faster than you pinching your friend. Like the example here, we have the um, AMV. A is the, do you know what plant is that? A. 
is that is Um, in Malaysia, but you find this more and more now. People sell it as part of the urban landscape uh, plants. Okay, and then B, you have uh, uh, I have seen it, but not as much as uh, Venus flytrap. That is called sundew. Sundew. The B it's called sundew. Actually, regular plants that you always associate, you know, like a chili plant. No, they don't look like that. They they are what we call as carnivorous plants. Okay, are they roaring? No, they don't. They don't. They they're not carnivorous like tiger. Okay, or your mom. <laughs> you know, your mom can be can get very carnivorous too sometimes. Um, they are carnivorous actually for us to to supplement okay usually this plant in their nature uh natural habitat they grow in what we call as the bog area in our country bog area is kind of equally like the peat area you know peat what's that emily um gumboot So, bog peat gambut, gambut that's in Malay. Um, this is actually not soil. Okay, soil that you, you understand that you learn. Have you taken your soil science before? Have you learned soil science before? Soil, you know soil? Uh, <clears throat> that's actually from rock weathering, minerals. Okay, so it's very nutritious for your plant. This bog. It's, it contains uh, nutrients, but not as much because this is actually from the decayed plant material. Decayed plant material. So kind of building up one upon another, give 20 million years ago, you get your bulk. Okay. So when this sundew and also Venus flytrap live in this boggy condition is it going to be very happy no so that's why this plant the genome the genetic makeup of it enable the leaf to get modified so it modified its leaf in the form of trap for this uh venus fly trap for the sundew it modifies the leaf with a structure that is called tentacles tentacles so the leaf it kind of look like a spoon and then it's equipped with this thing and this thing of, of course they can roll you know <clears throat> so why why this is happening if you were to grow these two plants, the sundew and Gen uh, Venus fly trap in our rich soil, it's pretty much, you're not going to get this trap structure. They're going to look like a regular leaf. Okay? So they do this, they become carnivorous to supplement their nutritional needs. Okay? Too bad your durian tree cannot do that. You know, suddenly durian tree, oh, this, this guy got tentacles, now I got legs to, to go next next village to get more nutrients. Too bad. Our, our trees cannot do that. So, this time frame can be very fast. This, when the, you have a fly, have a fly. So, this fly um, can actually, okay, thank you. Berapa? Okay, 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 thank you. Um, so, so you have your Venus flytrap. The Venus flytrap is going to stay open pretty much. And then this unfortunate fly, I'm very hungry, will start to pump. The moment it lands, 
this thing is not going to close right away. No, it needs to be certain first. So on the surface of this Venus flytrap, it started with not really tentacles, but micro hairs. There are many hairs. So these hairs will actually wait for a few more moments. Two or three of them, when they are moved, then only they will close. So actually, if you want to study plant memory, you know, like, like human, you study memory, right? Neuroscience and everything. This is a great plant as well. Because the plants need to memorize, oh, just now what happened? And then what happened is a, like a combination. So that the plant is actually thinking before it decides to close very rapidly. Why? Why this is important? Why, why don't it just snap close right away? Why? Can it just close right away? Whenever, you know, it sends something just landed. That closing using a lot of energy. Okay. All right. Open, close, open, close. If that doesn't require energy, the plants wouldn't bother it. But since they want to conserve energy, so this is very important. Okay. You think it's not a big deal. It is a big deal, actually. You know, you go to the shop, there's, there's some kind of um, ape opening the grocery shop. Try ask the ape to, to open close the shop 16 times in one hour. It's not a big deal, open. You're not doing any, anything anyway. What's going to happen to that ape after one hour? <laughs> Super tired, angry, 17 times, he will come chase you with parang. Okay, it's, it's just, it's just, it will make the organism not so happy. All right. Okay. So in a larger time scale, uh, like the sea, you can see that the tree is actually growing lopsided, you know, skewed to one side. What, what do you think happened? Strong wing. I mean, like, you, you receive strong wing as well. You like to put your face in front of the fan, right? Ah, uh, you do that as well. Did, did you grow one-sided? <laughs> so what, what happened? Can the plant keep on growing upwards? So, um, this is actually uh, what happens when the plants do genetically do not have modification genes. If these plants were to be changed to coconut tree, do you see coconut tree going side one sided? No, because the leaf has been modified to be in the form of frond. The wind can pass through. It's not going to have any impact when the strong wind coming towards it. But this plant, well, it looks like a normal tree, right? So strong wind kind of causing it to go one-sided more. Is it beneficial to the plant? It's actually the plant try not to be toppled down, to, to tumble, okay? And then you have D and E. <coughs> um, this actually, I have put an um, extra slide um, about this reaction wood, actually. Because this is a story about, if you were in forestry faculty, you'll, you'll, you'll learn about this, dendrology. So what happens is, depending on, um, depending on whether the tree is gymnosperm tree or angiosperm tree, so we have two gymnosperm and angiosperm. Have you seen this word before? So what are gymnosperm trees? What? What does it mean? So flowering and non-flowering, as easy as that. So gymnosperm, non-flowering, example like the pine. So angiosperm is flowering, you know? like uh, whatever, all our tropical, tropical um, plants, OK? 
Okay. <coughs> Gymno means naked. Sperm means seeds. The seeds are naked. They are not enclosed in any specific structure. Like the cone, you can see the cone of the pine got um, scales. In, in the crevices of the scales, it, it, that's embryo actually. So you got the, the cone, something like that. I hope you have seen um, coconut cone, uh, not coconut cone, uh, pine cone. So you got something over here. So that's kind of exposed. So angio, angio means a vessel. Sperm means seed. So vessel, pretty much like your blood. You have, you know, um, a condition, right? Uh, angina, angiogenesis. That's actually referring to, to the vessel, right? Okay. So when the wood's kind of growing horizontally, depending on whether it's a gymnosperm or gymnosperm wood, you will start to have this reaction wood. Reaction wood means the wood will start to grow one side more than the other. In the case of conifer, the gymnosperm, the reaction wood is called compression wood because the growth happening more in the lower side. For example, like this tree here. The lower side will have, you see, longer ring. So this will actually help the branch to go upward. Because the stem trunk should naturally go up, not go to the side to your neighbor. Okay. On the other hand, for the angiosperm, the reaction wood will be in the form of tension wood. And for tension wood, the growth is happening more on the upper side of it, like this. And you have more growth on this. And this actually will help the tree branch to grow upward. Okay. Why? Why, why don't both of the woods happening same growth? Just on, 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 the, on, on, the, on the downside. Because they are, these are two different plant systems. One is super ancient. Which one do you think ancient? Uh, yeah, gymnosperm. It hasn't got any flower. Flower is the, due to evolution. Yeah. One has been around since T-Rex time. Yeah. One has come around, maybe around Pharaoh time. So that's a gap. Uh, uh, tens of millions of years. So they, that's why they kind of respond differently. Okay. Right, so um, so while you're reading, you, you, you're going to see that uh, there's a, a, a number of uh, terminologies like um, cell autonomous and also non-cell autonomous. So cell autonomous means that um, whatever signal and response that is happening, it's within the same cell automatically autonomous within your one structure only for the non-cell autonomous this is the cell something else coming to the cell external factor okay then you will get your cell fit change whatever response it can be okay so this is an important um, um, concept because these two things happening at the same time. It's not like one organism only have cell autonomous response. No. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the good example is look at you. If, if you have a good mindset, you have a good mentality, you make your own decision. You, you, you just do everything by yourself without anybody asking you, without no parents forcing you to do things. So you are pretty much cell autonomous. But when somebody has to force you, you know, lecturers have to threaten you, your friends have to trick you into doing something, you are not cell autonomous. Okay? External factor is needed to make you respond. All right? Uh, oh, there's a, the word, uh, um, cat's pass. <coughs> 
caspases, uh, family of proteins and protease enzyme. Protease means enzyme that uh, break down protein. Protease, okay. Playing essential role in program cell death. Remember, I'll tell you about the program cell death. The example of your hand. Did I tell you? Or did I tell different class? When you were in the womb, your hand, like the duck feet, wet. Yeah. At certain point during your development as a fetus in the womb, program cell death, including this thing, will start to happen. That's why you get opening in your finger. That's why we have digits. If program cell death or apoptosis, that's the name of it. If this thing is not happening, all of us have hands like this. Maybe it's good you don't need an engagement ring. <laughs> right, that's safe course already, right? Yeah, no girls will be screaming, one this, one that which is bad for the jewelry industry. Oh, no, maybe uh, she's demanding, I want a uh, bracelet and bangles now, since I don't have fingers. <sighs> is it necessary to have all these um, rings and sort of token of marking to, to, to mark important event in your life? What do you, what do you think? <laughs> if you can afford it, but do you think it's it's important? You know that there there are there are many things in in our daily life. It's actually it's just a state of mind, really. I'm telling you this because many many great scientists that have made discovery important discovery in the whole history, they have managed to put this thing aside. Okay, if they kind of think the regular way, you're not going to find DNA. Like seriously, important things have been found because people manage to see the overlooked things. Okay? We have our friends from China. They can come to me. What, what, what kind of Chinese language are you speaking? Mandarin? You, you got a few, right? You, you, you got Hakka, you got Cantonese. Do, 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 if you come to me and then you start use all the cursing words in the world with all the expression, you can keep on cursing me for one hour. I will not have any reactions toward it. Y Imagine all, all the thinkable words that you can, you can use. Or maybe you want to use some words from Hong Kong as well. Throw in into the insult. I'm the one receiving it. I, I feel nothing. Because I don't understand you. But the moment I understand, yeah, something going to miss, be missing from your body. Yeah. So it's, it's just your, your, your mind, really. So... That's why it's very important not easily to get ticked off, you know. Because the moment you do that, you will waste your energy to, to, to look at something important. Okay, all this lesson, because scientists, they have um, mastered so many uh, important skills. Okay, observations. And then how do you analyze it? How do you, how do you make um, something, something important of your observation? Okay, so I think this is very important when you do your, your study, okay? Regardless, you do your master or your PhD, okay? Not only think out of the box, make your box bigger as well. Yeah, if you think out of the box, but your box, your, your self-capacity, I mean, like, you don't understand a lot of things. Um, not much going to, going to happen. Please don't go back and start scolding your friends in the language that he or she is not understanding. Okay? Because...
like that <laughs> I do sometimes to understand why 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 that is the case all right okay all right <clears throat> okay now we go to the um, the overview of this signaling thing okay so this is the scheme for the signal transduction okay you need to understand a few things here it doesn't hurt if you want to memorize this sequence, these components, because this is going to be very useful for a long time. You know what? You can use this to, it's applicable to daily life as well. I know this is science, but even if you're dealing with different things, this thing kind of pretty much the same, the, 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 the main components of it. So you have your environmental or developmental signal, Developmental signals mean something that's naturally in the cell or the nearby tissue within the same organism, okay? For example, auxin. Your, your plants, your cell can, your plants can produce auxin, right? So you don't have to necessarily apply auxin to your plant, but within it, it's got auxin anyway. So this auxin is actually a type of signal. Okay, so you've got environmental signal as well, light, temperature, touch, hormone, and nutrient. Is there something more that you think can be a signal but it's not mentioned here? What do you think? What, what signals can, can also be put in the list? You see, uh, this book has been quite a few years, actually. You know, this is why scientists keep on adding new information because you just thought of something that was not thought before. What do you think can be added there in terms of the signal? Environmental and developmental. Is there anything can be added to it? Anything? This can be your, your, your exam question later. <laughs> Which, w w will, will you agree if I say there is something else? It's not mentioned here. Maybe. Okay. What is it? So, what, what is it? Sound. Sound? Well, it, that's coming from your environment. Sound is actually in the form of wave. It, so it's like light, but light, not only wave, but it's also in the form of particles. Sounds, just wave. So it's actually like light. So that's under um, environmental. Yes, um, that's under environment. Whatever part of your environment that define your environment, Mediterranean, tropical, temperate, that is still environment. Infections? Infections? Disease? Infections? Disease? Do they live in your environment or not? Yes. What about the genome? The variety? Oh. Right. Genome and variety. It can be that 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 can be actually something determining whether you're going to have more signals than others or not. And pretty much like you, some of you very sensitive, cannot joke with, you know. Cakap sikit tak boleh, relax, huh? Right. 
Why? Why some of you don't care whatever uh, people say to you? You 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 just you know if I if I don't satisfy with you, I'll say something bad. Some of you, you know, will start make faces. You know, <laughs> stop talking for three months. <sighs> Why is it? You are still human. You are still the same age. Same faculty, same everything, but why? Why? Why you are reacting differently? Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much your, your G by E factor, you know. So G is your genetic makeup, your genotype, and E is your environment. Yeah, your environment. Actually, um, I'm thinking because I'm going. I'm going to put this in in our own research discussion. The signals can actually. It's a combination of two or three different things. Okay, it's not really environmental, or it's not really um, a developmental. It's kind of in the between. Okay, remember, wherever it is that you are dealing with, there must be something in the twilight zone. There's always something like that. So this something in between, it's happening all the time in biology. Um, I think you, if you learned about uh, breeding, maybe you have seen this before, co-dominance. 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 Um, your, um, you know the Mendel's experiment you do, so you have a, uh, red flower, your mom, your dad have a, I know better dad like a red, and then you have your, your mom's white flower, something like that. And this thing, if the um, allele is something like that, something like that, and this also, why, I hope you know what I'm doing. What is this? What I'm doing here? <coughs> recessive allele, dominant allele. Okay, so this is the recessive. So this is your G, genetic makeup of it. What is your allele here? So the resulting, the physical baby is going to look red, regardless. White, regardless. However, when co-dominance happen, when suddenly you have this, the cell just cannot decide. You know, like your parents are splitting up, have a divorce. Your kids just cannot, cannot separate the love. Should I follow mom or should I follow dad? Yeah, dad is richer, but mom will cook for me. Who do I follow? So, what do you think gonna happen physically to the baby? It's going to have to become pink. Yeah. So, this is in the twilight zone. We just cannot decide. So, the question earlier is something like that. This book is not the end. Something else, maybe you can add something to it. Who knows? Right. Okay. Then we go to the receptor. Okay, receptor, there are a number of things like kinase, G protein couple, F block protein, and ion channel. Oh my God, what are those things? Um, the slides are very few here. There is a reason. This thing, I advise you, don't read one time. Like, you take your own time to read, just have a self-discipline to read. Because one lecture and me just mentioning one time, I don't think you can even get everything in for, like 40% of it. Sometimes because this is one of the things that actually require prerequisite. Okay? To understand things like receptor, kinase. Have you have you learned that before? Actually, you have. Have you seen this word before? Force, for relation. 
Have you seen this word before? What does it mean? Phosphorylation. Where do you think you saw that word? There are many locations possible in the cell. Where do you think you see that, that word? That event? Phosphorylation. Did, did you learn photosynthesis? Yeah. Have you come across this thing? Phosphorylation. Did you learn this before? Oh, you know. Oh, that's, that's, that's already gone. Okay, phosphorylation, the short story about it is whenever an, a protein, usually enzyme, have the ability to add phosphate to other substance. Okay, so it can be anything. It can be any enzyme, can be um, any substance. So you have this ability to phosphorylate, to add phosphate to other people. Okay, and kinase, kinase is a type of it, one type of phosphorylating agent. Okay, you can if you want to call it. Okay. Whenever there is something named ending with A S E, you have a name, then it ends with A S E. Automatically, this is protein, and specifically, this is an enzyme. Automatically, anywhere you see a mylase. What else? Give me one example of enzyme. No? No example? Oh, they can be an exam question as well. What? Oh, yes, 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 the, pro the protease enzyme. You just learned about it. Yeah. Caspasis, the protease enzyme. Enzyme for, you know, cleaving uh, protein. All right? Protein can be uh, in different forms depending on the complexity of the structure. So one example of protein is enzyme, okay? Not all proteins are enzyme, okay? Enzyme, you know, they have function. They have the catalytic function to catalyze reaction, right? Okay, and then what about this F-box protein on your channel? Mm. Uh, It's, it actually comes from, you know, in order to make a protein, it comes originally from what? Protein is the end product. Originally, protein come from, comes from what? Genes, actually, the recipe of it. So whenever the recipe has this kind of F-box recipe, yeah, we call the protein to have this um, uh, name as well. All right, I don't want to go to, to, to detail into it because um, so you can think of F box. Um, this F box is actually, I said there is a specific sequence, right? This specific sequence we call motif. You know, motif? Look at your shirt. If your shirt got a specific pattern, maybe anybody wearing batik, uh, batik is a type of motif. Oh, yeah. Look at this um, shirt, the sleeve here. This is motif. Um, a pattern, then, it, then it's repeated. This is a, you know what shirt is this? <laughs> what shirt is this? This is motif. What is this? What motif is this? This is actually from nature. What is it? Anybody want to have a closer look? <laughs> That's actually a motif like this. So, so adalah benda-benda apa bunga-bunga lagi kat situ kan. This is actually bamboo shoot. Ah, pucuk rebung. This thing. 
So that's a motif. See, it's repeating. So it's pretty much like the F-box. So this, this F-box motif, it's present in the DNA sequence. And then the resulting protein, we call it the F-box protein. Yeah, okay? You see, you want to learn science, now we have to go to Bati industry now. All right, okay. So receptors, please understand, it doesn't have to be fixed in one place. Not necessarily. Receptors can be fixed in one place, like in the plasma membrane. It just started in plasma membrane, or it's just floating about. But it is still a receptor, okay? Because the function is to receive signals, okay? Um, the good example for this is like our satellite. Our satellite receives a lot of signals, right? From, from the space, the light signals, the cosmological signal, what, what, so many signals. Is the satellite moving or static? Is it fast? Yes. No? <laughs> you, you, you said just now, our satellite. Do you know satellite? You know satellite? No? No, you, she doesn't know satellite. What satellite? I think she's not talking about. Ah, ah. <laughs> um, so the satellite, it's, it's not static, right? It's fast. How fast is it? How fast? Um, I know the regular, there are many satellites also. China got the most. Thank you. <laughs> because they are facilitating the communication for the whole world. Okay. Um, the regular speed of satellite orbiting the Earth, they will see 16 sunrise sunsets a day within 24 hours. 16. They're so fast. There is no traffic light. PDRM even more. There's nobody to stop. Um, why is it fast? Why is it fast? You see, satellite actually, it's actually in the constant fall. Constant fall. It's going to fall because the earth is curved. If, um, if you have a cannon over here, if you have a cannon over here and you shoot a cannonball towards there, as long as the earth has not curved, it will fall, hit the ground. But the moment you have shoot the cannonball strong enough, far enough to fall at the curvature of the earth, it will continue to fall, 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 fall. I know it's, it's very hard to understand, but basically, if you are over here, if you shoot the cannonball, it's going to drop. But if you shoot even more here, it's going to drop. But if you shoot your ball up to here, it's going to keep on falling. Keep on falling forever. That's why one of the reasons why it can be very fast. Because falling is due to gravity. Right. There is no air resistance. Continuous free fall all the time. Gravity at some more super fast, not as fast as light, but still fast. Can you see 16 sunrises in a day? You can play um, loop video on YouTube. <laughs> you can see even more, right? Okay, so receptor is like satellite, so okay, it doesn't have to be static, right? So, signals transduction pathway. So, the moment receptor has been triggered. What happens? It will create this signal transduction pathway. So it will make other things happen. Okay? For example, you have sent a signal to your friend. For example, um, uh, you say to, to her, I like you. So if she is the right receptor, 
if she is not the right scepter, she'll she'll she just do nothing. Uh, I'm too bad. Uh, I don't feel anything. But if she does feel something, do you think she's going to stay static? She'll do something right. Yeah, she'll go to see back Amma and tell all the story. Yeah, yeah. And then there you got a very rich Akong and then we'll, uh, you know, withdraw all the money. Uh, let's make the wedding. Yeah. So, a lot of things will start to happen. Okay. Things like uh, protein degradation, phosphorylation, and so on. So, it will phosphorylate. Remember? it The kinase at something. So the action of adding phosphate to other group, that is a form of signal transduction, okay? And this actually can only happen once. That's why you have the arrow here. Because it only wants the signal to happen once and immediately stop. So it's like a negative feedback loop. You have a signal, we have an event to respond and immediately stop it. Okay? It's like your insulin. Right? You eat, you have your insulin spike and so on. And then at one point, when your glucose has started to go down, if your cell keep on producing insulin, you're going to die. Yeah, you're going to die for sure. So there is a negative feedback loop to it to stop this um, insulin from have more and more in your blood, okay? If it doesn't stop, it will go on to do the signal transmission. Okay, this is the cascade of reaction, okay? Phosphorylation, for example, for the kinase, can happen like eight times, nine times, 10 times. And not enough with that, it will trigger other things to happen as well. And this is called the transmission. It will cause things like hormone transport and electrical signaling. Just now, it's purely chemical, right? Biochemical, the phosphorylation action. Eventually, down the line, it can cause other reaction to happen, which is not necessarily biochemical anymore. It can be, you know, electrical signals, okay? And then even you will get your response, yeah. So your response can be anything like the gene expression, post-translational, um, cytoskeletal, and so on. And this will, at one point, give the negative feedback to this receptor to stop. Inhibitory. Okay? This signal's response cannot happen forever. Please understand that. All right? That's why you add nitrogen to your crops, it's going to look very happy, but keep on adding. Your, your crop, for example, your choy sum, it is an annual, okay? And it will start to flower around week seven, week eight. If you give nitrogen to choy sum for the first four weeks, five weeks, you're going to see that the growth is going to increase, you know, proportionately. But when the choice sum has started to enter reproduction stage, week six or something, seven, giving nitrogen is not helpful. Yeah. Because flowering, what does it need now? Potassium. Yeah. For the reproductive part. Okay. So that's why the negative feedback is required. Okay. That's the case of choice sub if, if you are dealing with perennial, you know, you have your orange, your kumquat tree. If that's perennial, right? You can give nitrogen all the time. If it's not producing fruit, it'll produce more leaves. As simple as that, right? Okay, so signal attenuation. Attenuation is mean like the, the reduction of it. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay, so... Uh, I think while you're reading, you're going to find these terminologies. Um, one component and two component signal transduction. So this is because this book, like any textbook, sometimes it doesn't, it just mentions the terminologies without explaining it. Okay. So the good way to learn about this thing is to have this thing next to you. Uh, when, when I was learning all this book, I always have the slides, these complementary things. Okay. 
So um, the one component regulator, you have your signal and response, and that's it. It's very straightforward, very to the point. Okay. Yeah. You pinch your friend, you get a slap back. End of story. Both both shut up. Okay. So the for the B, two component regulator, you have your signals, your signal get perceived by a receptor and it happens that your receptor is a type of kinase this kinase will phosphorylate and it will be received by a receiver there is a receiver here see here no receiver and this receiver is the one that will incite the response not this um uh receptor okay so the difference is this is having a receiver Two component and you know sometimes this is not even one cell it can involve you know cell in even different um, organ altogether yeah okay okay let's look at this um, so this is like a regular um, plant cell so you can see that for a typical plant cells you have different number number one you have different receptors all over the plant cell. Some receptors are in the plasma membrane right after the cell wall, like the re receptor for the brassinosteroid right here, and also the abscessic acid. So these are the name of the receptor, okay? And they are all a type of protein or sometimes glycoprotein. Glycoprotein means the protein is attached with um, carbohydrate. We have three macromolecules. We have carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Okay? Protein, the good thing is, it can combine with fat, or it can combine with carbohydrate, or it can, can combine three of them can be present together. Alright? But the, the base of it is still protein. Right? So you can see, look at, Look, look, look all this uh, abscessic acid. See the receptor? Is it, in, is it in the fixed structure? Floating about. Floating about. And some of this um, uh, receptor, like the um, MSC, this stands for mechanosensitive uh, receptor. This receptor is actually also present in bacteria. It's present in the plasma membrane. Again, it's present in the membrane of chloroplast. Remember you learned about the endosymbiotic theory? In the first lecture, you learned about it. We learned that why, the reason why the chloroplast has its own genome and DNA, and scientists say that it's due to the lonely bacteria that get into the cell. This is one of the proof because chloroplast is a bacteria and bacteria has its own special receptor and this receptor is also present in the chloroplast and you go to other bacteria you see that oh it's the same mechanosensitive receptor how come so one way to explain it is the endosymbiotic theory these bacteria ancestors used to be alone and then they just join join in together all right all right okay and then you have your yeah this is the f-box protein so you have your um receiver which is something like this that can cause the gene expression not necessarily gene expression sometimes you know you want to silence the gene don't think whenever you get a, a signal, you want to cause gene, gene expression all the time. No, sometimes you want to stop the gene expression. Okay, if you don't stop the gene expression, for example, I think you can see this in old people. Sometimes old people, they have a very hairy ears. You know, some old people, they got very hairy ears. The hairs shouldn't be that much, actually, but because they are old, there's a lot of errors and so on, the genes are not expressing and silencing in the right way, okay? That's due to senescing and aging, all right? 
can that can that be repaired? Well, ask Akon first. Do you want to go on or do you want to do something about it? Some people, you know, they just cannot wait to go. Then let it be. But um, is it a disease? No, not really a disease. It's just part of, part of the aging process. Although some people in Harvard can argue with me because they now regard aging as a disease. In terms of um, countries, nation, economy, you have to deal with population, the aging population, large amount of money now. Because when, you, when you're aging, you will automatically have other degenerative diseases as well. For example, high blood pressure, diabetes, and so on, compared to people who are not aging. Yeah. When you are not aging so much, automatically as well, your body can repair. You don't have all these degenerative diseases. Okay. So like the America, they kind of have started to see um, aging as a disease actually yeah um it's still a concept but i think eventually um they're going to to do something major about it all the policy maker yeah think about it if you manage to address you you, you don't do anything specific to address diabetes uh, you know high blood pressure alzheimer and so on you just do things to slow down or to reverse your aging just one thing Automatically, other things will follow. Yeah, yeah. Not to say that anybody can live forever, but yeah, that's the point. You, you cannot be perennial homo sapiens. There's no such thing. Eventually, you'll die. There are organisms that are not dead, even for quite uh, some time. Um, there is this plant. It's called... Um, uh, what's the name? Pando. Pando. Asp, asp, aspen. Aspen Pando. Pando Aspen. Um, maybe I can search this. Um, you know, there are some agronomists. They are trying to change, um, not by GMO, by physiology, because that's safer to change annual crop into perennial crop so that you don't have to do land plowing and so on. So I think maybe this is uh, kind of interesting to, to have a look. Um, and do aspen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this thing. It's, it's an aspen. It says, it says a tree, and do. Um, Let's see how old is that. Look at this. Look at the age. This thing, actually, all this pando uh, aspen forest, is actually the same tree. The tree didn't die. They grew tens of thousand years ago. And they're just, they're just producing the vegetative baby next to it. And the whole forest is actually the same organism. Yeah. It's just not that. It's like, think of you. You already 100 years old. Usually, you already go to the soil, right? You're just budding off and create the next you. Yeah. And then this, this you, since it's genetically, it is you thinking, like you behaving like you, it is still you. So you will have the second you for another 100 years. Yeah. So this is what happened to this uh, Pando, Pando Aspen. Yeah. It's in Utah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to, to show you something. Uh, Hundred years ago, yes, this thing. Pando root system was likely over ten thousand years. Um, even though the tree they do the carbon 
radio uh, dating, it's 10,000 years. The root is actually older than that because some, sometime in the past, the climate was not so good. The plant just stayed dormant in, in the soil. When it is happier time again, then only they could grow. So actually, this panel, one citation I saw saying that it's been around 80,000 years. 80,000 years. The modern human that we have these days was said to be started around 70,000 years ago. So that's a very long time. Okay, How can you manage to, to, to live for so long? So maybe you say, oh, this plant is just freak. It's just an alien spawn, that kind of thing. Some animals can do this as well, all right? But not, not thousands of years. I know there are some dolphins or shark has been around since, you know, Malacca Portuguese invasion. There are fish, dolphin shark that has been around since 600 years ago. And they, 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 they are still, you know, swimming about in the ocean. Yeah. So can, 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 can human achieve that? It's not like they, they are swimming about and they are actually belong to some kind of hospital in the ocean. You know, bedridden. No, no, no. They, they, they're still functioning, but not as fast. But they're still, still living. So think of it. Think of the impact to the agriculture if you manage to um, slow down, prevent senescence for your crop. For example, rice. You change your rice to an immortal rice. The impact is going to be very big because if your annual crop is now perennial, you, you can save so much on the labor, you can actually protect the soil from plowing, degradation and so on. Not to mention pollution that actually usually coming from the tractor. You see, there's so many. Yeah, but people do not want to go GMO about it. Yeah, and guess what? So we're coming back to here. Just by understanding this physiology thing, there is something that you can do to, to make your annual become perennial. Yes. Yeah. You know what signals to give, what receptor to wake up or to put to sleep. Yeah. So physiology is, is just about understanding how the uh, organism functions. Right? So it can do a lot, a lot, a lot more, right? Okay. Oh yeah, I put it here uh, about this, um, just in case if you forget again, because you like to forget, right? Phosphorylation, substrate, when it's phosphorylated, it is now a, has got a phosphate group. The reverse of it we call dephosphorylation, okay? The phosphorylation um, enzyme, it's called kinase. The dephosphorylation, the removing of the phosphate group, we call it phosphatase. That is the fundamental name of it. It can be attached to any substance. But the moment you see the name, you know. Kinase, adding phosphate. Phosphatase, remove phosphate. Right? Yeah, so that's a difference for that as well. Ooh, what is, what is this thing here? Hey, why, huh? Mm. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I want to show the receptor. You know, I put it in there. I forgot why I put it there. Um, so this is to show you. Um, this is plasma membrane. And this structure is actually uh, a type of receptor that is uh, able to do the phosphorylation. It receives the signals and it can phosphorylate. And these signals is called receptor-like kinases. Yeah, it is a kinase. It is phosph phosphorylating something. But since it also receives signals, that's why the name is receptor-like. If there is no signals, is it not doing anything? It's doing job. It's phosphorylating. But when the signal suddenly present, now it can perceive the signal. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much like you. You, you, you are a student, you are studying, you are doing all the exam, because you are a student. But let's say that you have the innate ability to um, 
to go for a running or athlete do you run or every day do you you know play play uh, uh, ribbon gymnastic every day only when it is needed right so naturally you are a student you are function as a student but suddenly there is an event sports day now i become the ribbon gym gymnast yeah nobody know oh she can actually oh no no he oh <laughs> he playing ribbon <laughs> that's that, that 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 shouldn't happen is there is there any male ribbon gymnast can it happen <laughs> can right can right but people don't do it yeah um so it's pretty much like that a kindness is doing the, the phosphor relation, but it can. Uh, so this um, receptor like kinase is actually involved in various events in plants. The, sorry, the basic name is receptor like kinase. This is the specific name of it. But that is the basic function. So for the cell elongation, these are the RLK. And they do various things to promote cell elongation. Yeah. So you can see it's involved in xylem differentiation, biotic. So if you want to learn about the receptor, RLK is the largest in the kingdom. Okay. Cannot go wrong about it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I would suggest if you want to go deeper into this subject. Delve deeper into RLK because that's, that's the most function. Not to say that you cannot deal with other receptors, but other receptors you might find difficult to find reference for it. Okay. Yeah. And there is a, a terminology here, ligand. Oops, sorry. Ligand. So ligand is actually... Um, yeah, I already put um, a definition down there. Any molecule or substance that can um, attach to your um, receptor here. So this can be your signals, you know, chemical signal, ions, sugar, amino acid, anything, right? All right. Okay, another thing you need to understand is the action of um, phosphorylation. Um, I highlight this because I, I saw in the past people people had a trouble to understand this. <coughs> mitogen is actually from the word mitogenesis. Okay, mitogen is a protein or peptide that induces the cell to begin cell division. So it can be anything. All right. Kinase, you already know, it is a type of protein that add phosphate, phosphorylation to other substance. Okay, so look at all this name here. Um, when you have your signals, and then you have your kinase. Remember, kinase. There are many types of kinase. This is another one type of kinase. MAP, mitogen activated protein kinase. It is a type of kinase. Kinase, 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 three times. There are three kinase attached to it. You have a one molecule of protein. It is in the form of complex. So it's like a structure, like the Rubisco. Rubisco for um, uh, the Kelvin cycle. It's got the larger unit and smaller unit. They come together, they form a Rubisco. So it's like here. So MAP3K means mitogen activated protein kinase 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 that's the full name of it it only this can phosphorylate the map2k so you have another set of protein in the cell that has only got two kinase attached to it and this protein can only be phosphorylated by a protein that has more kinase on its body. Okay, so MAP2K get activated can only get activated by MAP3K. So they will keep go on until they find this anchor protein. So we call this anchor protein because this is the one that acts as a receiver. 
before the final function happen. Okay. Meaning that this number here can be of any number. It can be eight. Okay. Mitogen activated protein kinase 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 kinase. It's very complex. It's very complex. Okay. But that is um, the whole idea. Okay. So when this um, protein wants to be deactivated, the phosphatase will come about to change it into the inactive form. MAPK, the active form got a phosphate on it. The moment phosphate is removed, dephosphorylation by the action of phosphatase, it becomes inactive. When it is inactive, the event of response is not going to happen. And I'll put it here again. Yeah. So you have your plasma membrane. This is your the membrane inside your nucleus. MAP3K, phosphorylate MAP2K, MAP2K, in a, phosphorylate MAPK. This MAPK can the anchor protein here to destiny here. It's either straight to do phosphorylation in the final target protein or this molecule here can go into the nucleus and do something else to trigger gene expression or silencing. Okay, so it's all about the fate now, right? Yeah, all right. Is it okay? Are you okay? Um, guess what? When you, when, when you have understood this, it's very easy to start opening genome from medical school. Then you can start to understand everything. Yeah. I, I can understand genome from medic people. One of the reasons is because of this thing. And that, that's why one plus point being a physiologist, you kind of automatically become transdisciplinary, not transgender. Transdisciplinary. Although a transgender can be a physiologist as well, we, we are not discriminating, discriminating people. That's people, okay? Whether naturally or not. All right, okay. Yeah. To show you the complexity of this protein, okay? This MAP3K, that's actually the generic name, the general name of it. Under it, it has got family, family of protein. So they have got different names depending on the pathway that they go. Okay, 3K means three kinases to it. 1K here, there's only one kinase to it. Okay, so this involved in defense response, uh, you know, stress response, stomata development, and so on. Yeah, stomata development, um, they don't call this um, mitogen thing, they call um, actually, with stomata, there are many weird names that scientists give for some reason. I do, I do understand why. Yeah, you if you if you are dealing with stomata, you'll see there are so many funny names. Uh, uh scientists scientists uh, give to the name of the gene. Guess what? All of these are protein. All of these are protein. Understand now why you need to eat a lot of protein? Yeah. Do you eat protein? Chicken. Chicken. With human, understand it this way. We have some amino acids that our body cannot synthesize. So these amino acids, I think there are eight, regarded as essential amino acids that you must require from diet. Okay? So be good about your diet management. Good diet management can actually promote a good brain. Because your brain too, even though people say that your brain is just fat, there are proteins in it. Okay? Yeah. All right. I think, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. I cannot stop there. How are you doing? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I need to give you assignment now because this is already week four or five uh, for SEL, Student Centered Learning. Okay. So I stop here. There is one lesson that um, I want you to work in group. 
to we'll decide later whether you want to 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 present it's a very short it's about the call something um second messenger so if you go to the book you'll see that um in addition to inciting straight response the receptor can actually appoint a second manager to do the dirty job go things like calcium and also ros reactive oxygen species i don't bring the book with me i don't know my book with, uh, got got leaks like to walk around um so why not work in your group um maybe create short slides maybe three or four slides and then maybe um we can have a short short presentation you remember i told you i don't want to replace your class as much by right you should replace six your classes off let's not do that we we will change I, I i have talked with the head of department i can change it into sel yeah all right so that nobody likes this class right let bygone be bygone all right so um so you got two groups um uh, chu what on what which one do you want um or you you can you can also who who wants to there's only two two second messenger uh calcium calcium ion and also ros that's in the book you can use other resources as well okay so what i need to know is in your slide depends maximum will be five slides only don't, don't, don't go don't go too crazy about it okay um tell people what is the second messenger in the single transduction what is it about okay and why is it important why cannot it be like straight away um, signal receptor response why it needs to have this second messenger okay and tell people your second messenger is what is it calcium ion or is it ros reactive oxygen species define it what is it yeah yeah and um, I hope that I can combine it into um, a slide and this can actually be useful for students in the next semester. Okay, all right. Yeah, use your creativity to, to, to do it. Let's, let's, um, let's target to finish this. This is week uh, number what? Five. Five, right. Um, let's have a look at this maybe on week eight. Week eight. So when you come back, that is week seven, right? One week after that. One week after that. Okay. So let's have what you you have done. Uh, maybe we can have a short presentation during lab time. You know, it doesn't have to be very long. Maybe ten minutes each group. Okay. Yeah. Tell people, general public, what is it about? It maybe you want to get something from this as well. You know, prerequisite knowledge. Remember? Yeah. Okay, you got it? Do you understand? Okay, all right. So work with your teammates, okay? Um, how many of you in one group? I forgot to bring your um, list name. This, no, this is not your name. All right. Okay, and finally, before we, we, we end the session today, uh, what about your first, first, first test? Do you want first test? Who wants first test? <laughs> um, I let's put it this way. Um, maybe we can change our first test into into some activity later. Uh, after after you come back from your mid sem, uh, I'll I'll decide what what activity that is because. I hope to bring you to some place, but I have not confirmed it yet. So your place, let's make our uh, uh, China friends to have sightseeing in our country. Yeah. Right? Yay. <laughs> they need to see the tropical trees. Yeah, they need to say hi to Pak Belang. <laughs> do, they, do they have that? <laughs> Do you have tiger in your country? 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> zoo doesn't count. Zoo doesn't count. You know, tiger like next. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They have that. They have that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so um, hopefully when we do the the outing, um, uh, that can be regarded as your class as well. Yeah, yeah. SEL, SEL. Uh, I'm thinking I don't want to give you too much of a replacement class. I told you maximum two, right? You have to replace, even though you have to do six. <laughs> All right, okay. I think that's all for today. So is that clear for what you need to be done? I should be wearing my hat. Where's my hat? Is that clear? All good? All good? Okay, okay. Any question? Any question? Yeah. Any comment? Tak puas hati? This, 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 this satisfaction? Yeah. I tell you, this, this thing is not... Admittedly, this is this this is not something something easy. I just you just need to relax, 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 relax. Yeah, but the moment you know it, you know it, right? Okay, okay. So if if that's nothing more, I think that's all for for today. So I'll see you again on Thursday. Please come a bit early, like that day. You see, when we start early, we can finish early. All right, very early we can finish. Okay, so this first day, 7.45, go to the farm first because we need to fertilize your onion. Did you, have you looked at your onion? What happened to your onion? Did you visit your onion? Okay, okay. Is it still living? Growing? Any, anybody dead? Okay, so let's, let's, let's have a look at it. And then when you're done with that, very quickly we come back here because we need to... Um, have have you take up? Is it dry enough? Remember you got your inganin in here? I think it should be dry. Ooh. Yeah, anybody got salt? Ooh. I, I, I want <laughs> This is very tempting. No, no, no. You can have it, but you need to, to take that off first. Yeah. You see, when it's dry, it's very easy to remove the soil now. So, uh, just bring a toothbrush, okay? During your uh, class later. Just to clean just a bit more. And then you can take your data For your RUE. Okay? Alright, put it back. Too hot. Put, put it back. Put it back. Oh no no no! Uh, take take out take out take out take out and then uh, but simpan kat lab.